Hello everyone, this is William and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to make anisotropic hairs for characters. So, for those who don't know what anisotropic hair is, uh, it is this effect that we can see in this sphere and you usually use this to make hairs so you can have the reflection of the hair to follow the different hair strands that we have. For making this effect we have a lot of different techniques actually, but most of them are really handmade and you, and you have to make a lot of effort to make something that works and to, to, that looks beautiful. And this technique that I'm going to teach you guys today is like the easiest way that I ever found to make anisotropic hairs like this. What we're going to need is marble set, substance painter and blender. But actually you can use any other softwares if you can have like you can make textures uh, models and you can render in any engine engine too so for, uh, in our case we're going to start in blender and here in blender i have the default scene i'm going to delete this and I press shift a and add a new uv sphere and i change the shade mode of this sphere to shade smooth I'm going to add a tab to see the UVs of this sphere and what we want to use this technique that I'm going to teach you guys is to have UVs that look this straight. Like it's important to have to 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 the anisotropic map to work properly. So I'm have this UVs the way I want it, so I'm going to export this here. Sphere tutorial 2. Perfect. So now in Substance Painter, I'm gonna add a new project and I'm gonna add this Sphere tutorial that I just created in here. So in here, I'm gonna change the preview mode to normal and I'll change the layers to normal too. I'm gonna add a new fill layer. and I'll enable only the normal channel. I'm gonna change the blending mode to replace and then and I'm going to copy and paste this layer. I'm going to change the normal color to a greenish color, a light green color, and I'm going to add a black mask with a fill and isotropic noisy. And I'm going to change the rotation of the UVs of this anisotropic noisy to 90 degrees. So I have this anisotropic noisy like in this direction. I'm going to add a filter with a blur filter. And that's perfect. So I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to change the normal color mode the normal color to a bluish color and here in the anisotropic noisy I'm gonna change the seed of the anisotropic and I'm going to, to play around with the balance so I have the effect that I want. Yeah that's perfect. We already ha can export this so we can preview how it looks like inside Marmoset. So I'm going to export this Perfect. And here in set, I'm gonna actually delete this and now make from scratch. So I'll add this here tutorial and I'll add the normal that I just created and I'll change the metalness to zero and I'll decrease the roughness to perfect. So to make the isotropic actually work, you're going to need to go into this reflection tab and change from GGX to Anisotropic. And here we have a pretty strange result. So what we need to do to make it work properly is change the Anisotropic direction. So I'm going to change to 90 degrees. That's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. And I'm going to change the Anisotropic to a lower 
value. So that's perfect. So we can ha already already have the isotropic working here. So what I'm going to do is make some adjustment here to have some different results and see what we can actually achieve with this anisotropic. So I'm going to add a new layer and I will disable all the channels and I'm going to change the blending mode to pass through. And I'm going to add a filter and enable only the normal channel and I'm going to add a blur slope. The source type I'm gonna gonna change to custom noise, and I'm gonna take a anisotropic as the noise for this filter. Perfect. So in the noisy parameters, I'm gonna rotate this noisy, so I can have this blur slope going in the direction of the anisotropic. So that's perfect. I'm gonna change the x amount to one and I'm gonna add a new filter, blur filter, and decrease the intensity. Perfect. So yeah, I can export this. Perfect. And you can see we can ha we have a pretty different result in here. So something that we can, we can actually play around with the noise parameters to have a lot of different results. Something I'm going to make just so we can see things that we can do differently is change the Y amount. And you're going to have a pretty different result. Perfect, I'm going to export this. Oops. Export textures and export. Six settings. And you have a really different result. So yeah, this is basically what we need to make this isotropic maps. I'm going to show you guys how I make the, the this isotropic for hairs like this. It's actually almost the same thing, but we, what we want to do to make it work with the same technique is to have the UVs the same way that we made for, for that sphere. So what we have to do to make the UVs like this, we have to add a seam at first. So to add a seam, we have to press Alt and click a edge. So we're going to add to select a whole uh, loop and I press Ctrl E and mark seam. So now we have a seam and what we need is to Select the whole mesh and press U. Press Light Map Pack and follow active quads. So you can have a UV straight like this. Something important to make the UVs like this is that you can have triangles. Like it looks like we have triangles here, but actually what we did for this. Uh, vertice, vertice right here is that it actually is not merged, so we can ha use this technique. If it was merged, we couldn't use it. So, what we did to make make it like this is we select all the vertices and press S and zero. So they are in the same location, but they are not merged. So yeah, we, so we do this for all the different hair strands. And what we want is for them to be in the same direction. Probably like this. Yeah, perfect. So now that we have this, we can export this. And I'll make the same thing for this hair in here.
So that's how it looks in the final hair. So I'm gonna make it some adjustments just so I can be so I can have the result the way I want. I'm gonna increase a little bit the roughness. Maybe I change the metalness to speckler and I decrease the fresnel and so I can control the intensity of the specklers. Perfect. So now I'm gonna add a secondary reflection with Insotropic as well. And I'll change the Insotropic direction to 90 degrees again. And I don't want this secondary reflection to be as strong as the first one, so shouldn't be the intensity shouldn't be that strong. Maybe right here, and I'll change the refraction sh shift. Something that I like. Perfect. So that's how it looks in the final result. So that's it for this tutorial guys, thank you for watching, if you like this tutorial, please consider subscribing and taking a look at our game Fight and Fall. This game is going to launch at the end of this year and it would be extremely helpful if you would wishlist the game on Steam, the link is in the description.